This year, the union movement has the chance to make history. We have a massive role to play in the YES campaign for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples to be recognised in a practical form of a voice enshrined in the Constitution. After 65,000 years of continuous culture, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples should be recognised in the Australian 122-year-old Constitution. By campaigning for a yes vote this year, we will be building on a proud union legacy. There is a long and proud history of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander unionists taking action and making change in our movement. I want to tell you three stories from that history that are relevant today. In 1939, a letter appeared in the newspaper of the Australian Workers' Union. It was written by a lifelong unionist who was remembering his time as a union member in the Shearer strikes of the 1890s. He wrote, I was a member of the Shearer's Union from the time of its organisation until I got too old for work. I am now 78 years old. I was active in the union in the year of the call out 1890 on the Darling River and in the big Shearer strike. In 1894, I was on picket duty. The author of that letter was William Cooper, the legendary Aboriginal activist and leader. He had played a leading role in the day of mourning in 1938. He had condemned Nazism and called for support for Europe's Jewish population when so many others were silent. And he had spent years gathering thousands of signatures from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples on our famous petition to the King. The primary demand of that petition was to grant our people representation in the federal parliament. Mr. Cooper was a proud unionist. He made a connection between the strikes of the 1890s and the ongoing struggle for justice for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. He saw the fate of the union movement and the struggle of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as being bound together. And so do we. In 1939, Mr. Cooper was calling for a Royal Commission into the racist government board that sought to control Aboriginal people's lives in New South Wales and denied them self-determination. While his call was answered by individual unions and individual unionists, it was not answered by the whole of the movement. It was not answered by the vast majority of our movement. This is important for us to remember. For while our history contains our proud accomplishments, it also contains our mistakes. We need to remember both and to learn from them. Because being open and honest about our history by accepting what we did wrong, this is how we learn to do better in the future. 60 years ago, in 1963, the ACTU Congress adopted a far-reaching policy in support of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's rights. This change in attitude in the movement was the direct result of activism of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander workers and unionists, supported by other comrades in the movement. Activists like Joe McGuinness, President of the Federal Council for the Advancement of Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders and proud members of the Watersite Workers Federation. Activists such as Davis Daniels and Dexter Daniels of the Northern Territory Council for Aboriginal Rights who would go on to play a central role in the wage equality campaign. In 1963, the union movement pledged our support for constitutional recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. This became our support for the 1967 referendum. At that conference, we also pledged ourselves to campaign for wage equality for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander workers. This campaign was spearheaded by a union case for wage equality 
for the pastoral workers in the Northern Territory. But its most famous moment came at Wave Hill when the Gurindji workers led by Vincent Lingari walked off the station. What followed was a nine year long struggle that began over wages, but soon became a highly significant campaign for land rights. This nine year struggle was led by the Gurindji, but was also supported and sustained by unionists across the country who donated money and supplies and took action in solidarity. 30 years after the ACTU's 1963 Congress, in 1993, the ACTU hosted a major conference called Partners for Justice. This conference was held in the wake of the Mabo decision and amid the push for reconciliation. Partners for Justice brought Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander unionists together to discuss the major issues facing them, to have a forum in which their views could be heard. Over two days of discussion, participants drew up an extensive set of policy proposals that were adopted at the ACTU Congress that took place later that year. It was an act of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander unionists coming together, bringing their knowledge to bear on the major pressing issues and determining themselves what the best response would be. A response that was then brought to Congress, the mass democratic decision-making forum of the movement and endorsed. In a speech prepared for the conference, the legendary Aboriginal educator, leader and unionist Kevin Cook said that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander struggle for many generations had focused on recognition of our rightful ownership and of our desire to be custodians for our lands. And he called on the broader movement to work to genuinely understand this perspective and to use this as the basis of our future learning and future actions. This is a challenge we still face today. These are three moments from a much longer history of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander unionists taking action for recognition and our basic rights. This is the legacy that all unionists have inherited. It is important for every union member to know this history. But it's even more important that we take the opportunity we have this year to make history. We have the chance to add a new chapter to our movement story. Let's make the most of it. Let's do everything we can to win this referendum. Let's make sure that in a few years time, none of us are looking back and thinking, I should have done more. It's time. Let's do this and let's win big this year. <laughs>